everyone. My name is Katherine Finney, and I've never been what you would call normal. I grew up in the Midwest. My father was a brewery worker. In the 1980s, the brewery shut down, and he found himself at a workforce development course. At that course, he learned uh, basic data entry. From there, got an internship at IBM at 36, and then went to work for digital equipment. So literally, the VAX changed my life. And five dollars to anyone here who remember VAXs. So as a result of that, I moved to Minneapolis. I grew up on the rough and tumbled streets of Minneapolis, Minnesota. <laughs> and while most people had normal sort of things they did in the afternoons, most kids watched cartoons, my favorite TV show was Bosom Buddies, that great 1980s TV show. Yes, yes, Tom Hanks, Peter Scolari, cross-dressing men, yes. And, and so that was my favorite TV show, and I used to love to watch it. It foreshadowed things to come. And while most people have normal hobbies like ultimate frisbee and, hack and hacky sack and things like that, my hobby is filling out forms. There's nothing I love more than a really good form. So <laughs> tax season for me is like, yes! And so I left Minnesota, went to school on the East Coast, and became an epidemiologist, which was a great preparation for my career as one of the first fashion bloggers. I want to apologize to you for the selfie. That was a little bit my, my issue. I'm sorry about that. And so it was during my time as one of the first fashion bloggers that I started to receive great notifications and emails from women who were starting tech companies with the names of like Birchbox and LearnVest. And I was like, wow, I'm going to do it too. And so I went and entered one of the first incubators here in New York, and it was the first time in my life where I felt, I would say that I felt not... Uh, that the expectations were not very high of me. And it was really hard for someone like me who's used to being an overachiever and being out there for people to have low expectations. And it kind of just didn't make any sense to me. Um, why was I the only black woman in this group of 45 guys? Why was tech so incredibly white and so incredibly male? Um, again, I grew up around tech. It didn't make any sense to me. It seemed actually kind of abnormal, particularly in a city like New York, where diversity is part of our fabric. That's what makes New York great. So it just didn't make any sense to me why this was the case. It really, really didn't. And so the more I dug deeper into why was this, the more I found out that it shouldn't be and how abnormal it was for tech to be so male and so incredibly white. Um, women, we, we control the dollars. Uh, most of the private wealth in the United States is from us. We are actually in a position to be investors. So why aren't we investing? Why aren't we there? And then when you look at the black population, we have more purchasing power than the countries of Israel and Australia. I don't know if you've been to Australia. I've been to Australia. Australians have a lot of money. That's a lot of purchasing power right there. And then when you look at black women, we engage in social media, we engage in smartphones phone, more than any other group of women. I mean, and that's true. If you live in Brooklyn or Harlem, you could probably attest to that being the truth. So why weren't we there? I mean, we're a market, not a charity. And while we think it's great that you want to teach six-year-olds how to code, we would much rather you help their parents get jobs because that's what's going to really have a big impact on what they do. So all of these things sort of came together, and I thought, well, you know what? What am I doing to be a part of the solution? And so I founded Digital Undivided, which is a social enterprise that focuses on getting more urban entrepreneurs with the focus of women into tech. And we've had quite a bit of success. A great majority of our Focus Fellows have actually raised money, over 30%. And while that's significant, it could be better. And why it's also very significant is that most of the venture capital is not raised by black folks. And so while this is normal, I attend a lot of hackathons, and I think totally it's fine um, that people of the same sex, the same gender, the same race are together. There has to be a new normal, too. And that new normal has to be more inclusive. It has to in include people who look like this, people who look like me, people who look like you, teens. It needs to be a lot more inclusive if we're going to be successful in this world. And so I want to encourage you all to see me afterwards. You can tweet me. Like I said, I married a, a, a nerd. I'm a nerd. We're proof that black nerds do exist. Um, and I look forward to talking with you all 
afterwards. Thanks.